Okay, thanks for tuning in for another test time video then on Wayne's Electrical. Uh, yes, it is that time. We're going to open up the case of test equipment, choose another piece of test equipment, get it out and have a just a general discussion about it. Okay, we won't be turning it off, we won't be doing any tests with it, we'll just have a little talk about it, and that will be that. So, if you were tuned in to the last test time video, you know... What bit of kit's going to come out of that case, and we're going to get straight into it. Now, this is a bit of a different twist, this one, because I don't actually need to open up the case. There it is. I've already got it out. So, we're going to be getting into that then. And, uh, yes, this is the next test time video. Let me get the uh, camera a bit closer then. This one... Dialogue on that. Okay. It's in a nice little case. You get the case with it. And it opens up. And inside we have got this. Just chuck the case over the back of the test equipment case. So what are we looking at then? Well, this device is called a CombiVolt 2. Tilt that camera down a bit for you. There it is. So what is it and what does it do? What would you use it for and all of that lot? Well, this device, it can do continuity. Okay, because it's got batteries in it, I will do a quick, very quicky though. I've got a feeling them batteries are running low in there actually. That seems pretty tame, it normally bleeps a bit louder than that. Okay, hopefully you've got that on camera. What I was doing is just touching the two test probes together. There's a little orange light, a uh, little yellow light in there which lights up just to say that uh, there is continuity there. That's not on a proper official test, it's just just to check that uh, you have got something there before checking, say, a fuse or something like that. You should never use that to uh, verify the operation of it before connecting it into any voltage. Okay, you should use a proving unit for that. And, uh, yes, I do have a proving unit. Okay, you can see that in the test time playlist. If you go in there, 690 volt proving units. Oh, yes. So, you can look, I've already just quickly demonstrated there. You can use this for testing continuity of fuses, uh, extension lead, and things like that. And the other thing you can do is check the voltage. But like I say, you should check this through first before connecting it into a circuit of any voltage. And that is for your safety. I'm just trying to get that to remain standing up there. Because I want to get that glare off the front of it. And then zoom in on it. Right, I think I've achieved that quite well. Let's get the camera right up to it without casting a shadow on any of the display. Tilt it down a bit. And then zoom in, and we can get right into the discussion of the CompuVolt 2. Did I mention the model number? Oh, it's on here somewhere. Okay, this is the Dialog DL6790. There it is then. I think I can use that as a video thumbnail actually. That would be quite nice. So, Dialog DL6790 CombiVolt 2 then. Stand it back up. Let's get it on, on that uh, readout display then. So, measuring voltage. What have we got on the front of that then? Well, we've got the little yellow light there. Again, it's got a it's looking for bleeper, continuity bleeper. 
Uh, two red lights down the bottom of here. Okay. When you're using this on direct current, this one's positive and this one's negative. Okay. And then you've got a series of LEDs up the, up here. Let me pull that zoom back a bit. Right. A series of LEDs then. We've got 12, 24. If I get all that stuff off the screen, I can be able to see it with you. So I can see it, you can see it, and everyone else can see it. So let's go again then. We've got 12, 24, 50, 120, 230. That does tick me off. I wish that was 240. And then right up the top, we got 400. Again, I wish that was 415. And then the top light right up the top there is 690. Okay. And then uh, when it detects up to a certain voltage and beyond, that red light lights up to say that, uh, you know, there is a danger on the end of those test probes. Okay. Well, there we go. Another thing that this one can do, it can do phase rotation apparently. And uh, on these test probes, you've got L1 and L2. Okay, so you would put these on to put one on one phase, one on another, and those green lights would light up. Okay, if you've got it in a certain certain way round, this one would light up, and then you would move these probes around in sequence on the phases. Again, that would light up, and you'd move it around again. That would light up so then you would know that the three phases are in the correct you know layout inside a control panel or inside a distribution box or whatever okay so yes you can do phase rotation as well two pro phase rotation uh again i'm not sure how i activate it but yes it's actually got a little torch in the top of it as well there you go I'm not sure why, but when that torch activates, the whole flip in front of it lights up, which uh not really good. That's not that red light is not actually supposed to light up, but it does. So all of that on the front of there, it's not supposed to light up when you activate the little torch in the top. Okay, so really speaking, that lamp in there should be better shielded than that. Now let me have a little talk to you about the other model of that. Okay, the Combi Volt 1. And why I don't like the Combi Volt 1. Down the bottom of here, we've got an LCD... LCD oh, I will get this right. Let me go again. An LCD screen. Okay. When you connect this onto a certain voltage, these lights on here, they obviously measure up, but that lamp there... Okay, it says 50 volts. Now, supposing you're only measuring, say... 31 volts. Well, on the Combi Volt 1, that screen on there, it's not there. It doesn't exist. Okay, so I'll just cover that up like that. When you touch your test probes on a certain voltage, if you're measuring, say, 31 volts, you, you don't know that it's 31 volts. Okay, so you'd only have the 12-volt lamp come on. Okay, and then the 24-volt lamp would come on. And then, well... Nothing else. So if you'd look on there, you'd think, oh, the 24 volt lamp is lit up, so that circuit's currently up at 24 volts then. But it's actually 31. Now on the Combi Volt 2, look at this, we've got a display on that. And yes, that would actually say 31 volts on that. Okay, so that display there can actually measure, I think, the minimum you can get on that. Because I once tried it by dialing it up on a variac. I've got a feeling in the, it, it lights up rather sort of faded though. I think the minimum you can get on that is 8 volts. Okay, although this unit does have a couple of batteries in it, those batteries do not power that display. Okay, they're just in there for continuity testing reasons. And what makes that display light up is the incoming voltage between these two test probes, okay. So if you, like, say, for example, do put 8 or 9 volts in that, you, could, you can only just about see it's very base, uh, very barely readable. But you, it does actually say 9 volts on there, I think. I think the minimum you can get shown on that is about 9 volts, even though the first light is 12. Okay. 
but I do believe you can actually get a minimum of 9 volts on it, but it's very, very faded out. You can just about see it. Uh, again, another thing I wish this done would, uh, you push a button on there somewhere and you add the backlight on that. Okay, but it doesn't. Okay, so if you're in like a low lighting condition, uh, you can't see the voltage on there. You've got these all light up and whatnot, so you can probably read those off. But like I say, if you had like 31 volts or... Uh, 415 volts, you know, that's a particularly dangerous voltage. Uh, we got 400 up there. But, you know, if you're measuring 415 or 440, uh, the next light up from 400 is 690. So, you know, you get your test probes in that circuit, and the 400 volt light comes on, you think, oh, the circuit's only 400 volts, when in fact it's 440 volts. So it's got that, you know, that bit of extra lethality to it. But the Combi Volt 1 won't tell you that. This one will, because it's a Combi Volt 2 and it's got the LCD screen, uh, display screen on it. And that is why I've opted for the Combi Volt 2 and not the Combi Volt 1. And that is what I would say to you as well. If you're thinking about getting one of these, do avoid the number 1. Yes, it does cost less, but you pay less and you get less. With this... As per one of my mantras, you pay a bit more and you get a whole lot more. Okay, which is why I've chose that. So that if I do get some kind of wacky voltage, 31 volts, uh, 245, okay, that display will show it. On there, the light would just come up and say 230. So I think, oh, see, uh, you know, it's a bit of a lethal voltage there, 230 volts. If I touch that, I'm going to get a blast. But it won't tell me the, the exact voltage. That display wheel, because this is a Combi Volt 2, don't forget. So, that's all what that does. It can check the voltage, but like I say, before using that device, you really should test it with a known voltage source, and that known voltage source is a proving unit. And you can find one of those in the test time playlist. 690 volt proving unit. Okay, so what we've been looking at then is the uh, dialogue Combi Volt 2, which is the model number DL6790. Okay, I'm going to put it back in its case because that's where it lives. Uh, cover up the test probes. We've got to look a little thing there that covers up the test probes just to keep them clean. Okay, so there we go. Let's get our uh, pouch, put it back in there if you can see it. There it is, I'll put all the wires back in the pouch then. Pouch case, call it what you like. Again, when zipping this up, you've got to make sure that the wire isn't sticking out the side and, you know, you cause it a bit damaged with the zip. There we go. So what I've got to do now is open up that case of test equipment, get out the wiggly finger and choose the bit of test equipment which is going to be shown in the next video as a little end teaser on this one, just to keep you hooked in. Right, so let's open it up then. I'm going to put this back where it lives, which is normally about there. Right, let's pick up the camera then. I've got Wiggly Finger ready, and we're going to choose the bit of test equipment which is going to be showing in the next video on another day. Okay then, here comes Wiggly Finger. stop okay the next bit of test equipment has been chosen it's in this bag pouch here there's nothing written on it okay so there we are that is going to be the next piece of test equipment to be discussed in the next video which will be on another day okay so if you haven't yet whack that subscribe button get in there right now press it Excellent. You've now pressed it. You are a subscriber to Wayne's Electrical. And when that comes up, you'll get a notification saying that there's another test time video for you to watch. And we shall be discussing this bit of test equipment in another video on another day. I will just put that back where it belongs, just to keep everything neat and tidily and orderly, of course. Let's close up the case of test equipment, and I think that basically wraps up today's video. Now... If you can spare me one, I'm pretty sure you can. 
big old thumb up would be much appreciated. So I know that you enjoyed watching the Combi Vault 2 video. Okay, and I'm out of here. Like I say, stay tuned and, you know, next couple of weeks or so, we'll bring you another test time video. Okay, and you can watch that. And that bit of test equipment, which Wiggly Fingers just chosen, uh, will come up in the next video. So, I'm out of here, and cheers for watching this one then.